Let's uh, invite on board then uh, someone who needs no introduction when it comes to the startup and the VC space. Um, talking about uh, none other than Sanjeev Bikchandani, who is the co founder and vice chairman at InfoEdge. And Sanjeev, thanks so much for joining in. Very high expectations from the startup universe this time around, especially when it comes to angel taxes. What's that on top of your mind when it comes to the entire space as to what the budget should dole out? It's not just the budget, it could be post-budget also, you know, it's uh, there's an ongoing sort of conversation with uh, the government and the startup sector and uh, in, and VC investors. Uh, I think there are seven or eight things that uh, are constantly talked about. One, of course, is, uh, you know, perhaps removal of angel tax. The second is equalization of capital gains tax for private and public stocks. Uh, you know, in general, anything that uh, encourages more investment into startups, that uh, eases, uh, you know, business, conduct a business for startups, uh, these are generally good things, right? Um, and now, at a time when uh, public markets are doing so well, uh, you know, enough investors are perhaps not as keen on private markets as they are on public markets. Uh, because public markets are not liquid, public markets, your know, investment is locked up for uh, several years. Um, so it's important that private investing is also encouraged suitably. Um, you know, another area where I think startups have a challenge is in attracting good independent directors, given the kind of onerous responsibilities and potential liabilities independent directors have. Um, and startups really can't afford to compensate independent directors too well. So perhaps, uh, you know, till about a decade or so ago, um, you know, independent directors could get ESOP. Perhaps that could be considered once again, uh, because uh, how else would startups attract good independent directors? And given the governance issues um, we've seen in the startup sector in the recent past, uh, I think it's good to have good independent directors in, on the boards of startups. Um, you know, um, then ESOP taxation uh, can be made perhaps a little bit more employee friendly. You know, it can be taxed at the time of sale and not at the time of exercise, maybe. Uh, that would help. These are, these are a few of the things that, you know, uh, you know that, that, that would make sense. I think uh, easing of um, reverse flipping, the, the process. Uh, you know, it takes two, three months now. Can it be brought down to a couple of weeks? It'll help a lot. Uh, I think, um, you know, uh, Equalization of GST, when both in the offline and, and digital worlds, for example, in the ed tech sector, education has no GST, but uh, there's a 5% GST on um, uh, on digital uh, education. So a level playing field would help. Yeah, that's true. A lot of valid points there uh, in terms of ease of doing business as well. And, you know, I asked this to Harshal and I'd like your view as well. Just as the government has already prioritized financial inclusion, don't you think the focus on technological inclusion is also the need of the hour? You think absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I, and that's it's not either or, it's both. You can have financial inclusion and you must have digital inclusion because... Uh, if you don't have digital inclusion, you really can't have financial inclusion because a lot of the financial inclusion rides on a digital backbone. Yeah, absolutely. Going hand in hand is critical. And the government has also emphasized make in India, self-reliance. How do you think the budget impacts foreign investments in Indian startups, particularly in sectors that rely on global collaborations? We need all sorts of investment, a domestic capital, foreign capital. The truth is more than 90% of risk capital in India comes from overseas. So while you must encourage that, we must equally encourage uh, domestic capital going into uh, early stage startups. So um, while there's a venture capital industry in India that's developing domestically, perhaps the government can make it easier for companies to invest into startups from the balance sheets. Right now you have this whole law around becoming an NBFC, becoming a holding company and all sorts of uh, issues around that. Uh, so, and, and, and if, if, if companies can invest in startups, uh, you know, more easily than they currently can, it will help a lot. And you know, you've talk, spoken about the prioritization of growth of digital payments. Um, how much more can the government do in this front to ensure that transactions are engaged in a more confident manner, that there is more security infrastructure? I think I think uh, many things are happening. I think the government and the RBI uh, and SEBI are on top of uh, uh, of regulations. And, and, and I think a lot of that stuff is pretty good. 
Sure, and Sanjeev, in the past you've completely debunked the term funding winter. So I wanted to get in a status check from you right now. What is the update on the funding environment in particular for India? I think, um, you know, uh, there was never a funding winter for good companies. Yes, the froth is gone. Uh, yes, investors are a little bit more cautious and they're not in a hurry. They'll take their time. But good companies have always and will always get funded. So I don't see that as a problem. Right. And, you know, since we have you with us, let me get in your thoughts. Just very recently, the Zomato co uh, founder and CEO Dipinder Goel joined the Billionaire Club. It is a portfolio company of yours. So, what level of return are you anticipating for Zomato? Do you believe that Blinkit could even become bigger than Zomato? Yeah, we are, we are still holding Zomato and uh, we have no plans to sell right now. Um, so we believe in the long-term future, uh, the long-term story. We believe Zomato has uh, done something really, really good with Blinkit. Uh, and the core food delivery business is also doing very well. Uh, so we, we, are, we are confident of the future with Zomato. You've also bet on the fintech unicorn policy bazaar. That's paying off quite well for you. What are your thoughts here? Even policy was are growing well, and we expect growth to continue. So we are hopeful and confident that uh, policy was will continue to do well. And you've also spoken about how your anti-portfolio is quite crazy and that you've missed out on a lot of opportunities. Do you want to spell them out? Any regrets? Oh, uh, they're very, very, I mean, uh, sometimes really good opportunities we passed on. We passed on Flipkart, we passed on Ola, we passed on the who's who of uh, the Indian startup ecosystem. But I've always maintained that it doesn't matter what you say no to. As long as the ones you say yes to are doing all right, you're doing all right. And are there any sectors, specific sectors or industries that you believe are poised for significant disruption? So we don't do it top down, we do it bottom up. We meet about a thousand startups a quarter and we invest in three or four. Uh, and, uh, you know, sectors emerge. Um, so when you're investing in category creating companies, you don't look at categories, you look at companies. Those companies go on to create categories. So we invested in Zomato in 2010 and Policy Bazaar in 2008. Those categories did not exist when we invested. We invested behind good startups, good entrepreneurs, good teams, and they went on to build categories. And that's the way we look at it. All right, thank you so much. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.